with children wow. he's happy he's ever been but if that's just a prime example of the sort of thing yeah, my dad's yeah, done exactly. and from the book it, it all started from the book once he wrote the book well he actually went live on facebook and mm -hmm. then he then wrote his book but since then he's sort of been a changed man you know what i mean because a lot of people yeah. want to read the book and a lot of people will understand you know the way he wrestles is how he is in real life not sure. now but back then you know he mm -hmm. went in there he, he, he didn't go in there to, to wrestle he went in to hurt someone you know what i mean yeah yeah there's no there's no, um, you know, not a swear, but no pissing off Roy Knight because you, you know you're in for a war. You know you're going to get hurt. And mm -hmm. from his book, you know, it's got what happened to him when he was younger, you know, being abused as a child um, sure. to to his football career, you know, mm -hmm. of not not making it all the way to the top. And to his wrestling career where, he, you know, um, he, he had a WWE tryout. He was in the WWE and it caused his criminal record, you know, that, uh, yeah. that failed as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's sort of come all around itself. But it's all worked himself out because... If he had succeeded in football, you know, he wouldn't have had to help the people he's helped now. If he had succeeded yeah. in wrestling, he wouldn't have had to help the people he's helped now. So, you know, my dad, I don't think my dad would change anything, but I can't mm -hmm. stress enough how, if, if you like wrestling and, you know, or even if you're, you're someone that suffers with depression or yeah. if you just want a good read during the quarantine, like just yeah. buy, his, buy his book because you won't regret it. And it, no, it I, is, I, I don't want to give too much away because yeah. it is... Um, it is a, a fantastic read, and for myself as well, I, I have read it. Um, you mm -hmm. know, there's parts in there that I wouldn't have wanted to read, and um, you know, it, it's one book. One one point you'll be laughing, and at another point you, you'll be crying. So it, yeah, it yeah. is brilliant. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I think it's really good storytelling. I think for anybody that wants to kind of read, it's not like you say. It's not just about wrestling. There is more to take in. You don't have to necessarily be a wrestling fan. To, not at all. Uh, sort of enjoy. It and read and, and kind of relate to some of this stuff because it kind of hits home quite real. Um, yeah, it does, areas, yeah. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, I just, I definitely wanted to get out there because I, I do feel your day, like he, he really does go beyond for a lot of uh, people that I see. And yeah. I hear feedback from like all the time, open arms, no worries, he's going to be there. And um, yeah, I think that really sticks out and he's like, sort of values uh core values about your dad so uh wanted to make sure we, we talk about that now obviously i have a lot of wrestlers on, on and that i meet and stuff like that and one of the common themes i always say to people is like oh do you watch do you watch any other wrestling currently on the tv and most guys say to me god no um i can't watch it anymore because if i watch it it's not because they feel like they're above it but they kind of they tell me that like you're analyzing it too much from a, a different perspective and you can't enjoy it as you once would. What? Where do you stand with that? Are you somebody that watches anything current or? Yeah, I, you... I watch. I watch everything. I, I totally disagree yeah. with that. Um, right. You know, like they're uh, analysing it because, you know, a lot of people their dream, for example, is to go to WWE or AEW mm -hmm. or New Japan. Mm -hmm. So, um, if if you aspire and dream to go to one of these companies, but you're not watching what they do, you're not mm -hmm. watching what what's on TV at the moment, which is clearly what they want to see. Then mm -hmm. how you how are you gonna? How are you going to yeah. make that a reality if you don't know what they want? Um, yeah. You know, and for me as well, taking away completely from wrestling, a lot of my friends are in the WWE, AAW, or New Japan, and I mm -hmm. want to see them do well. You know, as well as the British guys that I'm not as pally with, I'd love to mm -hmm. see them all do well because they're representing our scene. You know, and mm -hmm. I want to see, I want to see what they're doing. I want to see what was meant to be the best of the best. And if if I was to go to one of those companies, um, any three, I'd know what is what is it at the moment, what mm -hmm. um, the bosses want to see, what yeah. um, the fans want to see, because whatever they're doing on TV is obviously working. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think, I, I just just my opinion, Yeah. I don't, I don't analyse it. Um, I don't watch it all. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't sit there for three hours and watch Smack, uh, Raw or SmackDown. I just go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'll like, watch, you know, the latest from the New Japan show or the latest from yeah. the AEW show or the latest from the WWE show because mm -hmm. I just want to see what's the current at the moment because... Obviously, you know, they're the three biggest companies and I think every wrestler um, aspires to be in one of them. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. And I always say to a lot of them, my reply to that sometimes is that actually yeah, that's no different from probably about 80% of today's fans <laughs> because everyone's doing that overanalyzing stuff just because the society, the way everything's changed and it's a lot different to how it was like 20 years ago. Um, that's for sure. Like when I go to a live, any kind of live show sometimes I, I kind of feel like i'm surrounded by people that are going to tell me what it should happen what why it isn't happening and they're almost like uh they're, they're just like booking the match for me as opposed to just enjoying it for what it is 
So I, yeah. I don't think that they're the only people out there that, that are kind of thinking that way, if that makes any sense. No, definitely. Uh, I mean, I mean, I when I go, when I go to, when I go to a show as well, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there was always monitors at the back, and obviously, uh, I want I want to watch what's going on the rest of the show, so I can make sure yeah. I don't repeat what goes on earlier, or sure. you know, or just just to enjoy the show. You know, Rev mm -hmm. Pro put on some of the best shows in the world, and yeah, you know, yeah. I'm I'm lucky enough to be a part of their roster. So when I'm sitting backstage and watching the guys go out and perform, you know, my friends go out and perform in front of the crowd. I can see what the crowd are up for. I can see what moves not to repeat or, mm -hmm. you know, what things not to do that they're not up for. And not just that, you can see what sort of level you, you, you got to perform at as well. You know, if someone goes out and have a killer match, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, damn, like, I've got to go out and have a good match as well. Because if not, I'm going to yeah. look real bad. So, you know, mm -hmm. I think rather than analyse it, just like you just said, just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, now, I mean, like, the kind of way like you wrestle, like what are your, what what sort of stuff do you enjoy watching? Have you got a certain style that you enjoy more than others, or a certain era of wrestling that you enjoy more than others? Something maybe you've gone back to. Is there anything that like stands out as as being your sort of like go to watch? Um, no, not really. I mean, um, you, you know, I enjoy I enjoy any sort of wrestling because before we start wrestling, you know, we we all fall in love with because we all watch it. Um, oh. So for me, I don't know. Funny enough, the style that I don't do would be the old school British wrestling and the style I can watch all day, which I've been watching a lot of lately, you know, are people like Stevie right. Gray or Johnny Sane. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've been lucky enough to wrestle uh, Johnny Kidd a few times. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, to me, that was like wrestling a legend, you know, one of the Hall of Famers, yeah. but yeah, he is yeah. like a British wrestling legend. And, um, you know, and for me, that's a style that I don't not like do. It's a style, like, you know, I, I do like to wrestle like that. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, th there's some of the fan, like, the, the greats from the past and, you know, and obviously, I think every wrestler's dream is for for people to go back and watch them. You know, when they're when they're uh, older. And for me, I just, I just like seeing what they were doing and what was in fashion and what was what was wrestling forty years ago. And that's the sort of thing that I do enjoy. Yeah, I mean, often you go back and watch things like, especially like from the sort of seventies era, and then what what's old there yeah. becomes new again in some respects. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of stuff just comes around again, and it's surprising how much gets recycled through the I years. I totally agree. Yeah. It's, you look at you look at for example, um, Zack Sabre Jr., one of the best best uh, British technical wrestlers in the world. Just think of mm -hmm. some of the matches he could have had, for example, like Johnny Kidd yeah. or Stevie Gray or mm -hmm. Johnny Saint in their prime. They'd have been fantastic matches, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Uh, and like with WAW, obviously, like it's going very well. Well, it was going well until this happened. But yeah. like, in, in, in the in the general sense of it, how is WAW uh, as a promotion currently right now? I mean, yes, yes it's great. I mean, um, I don't know um, what order they're be in, but they've got to be one of the longest running in uh, yeah. in the UK. Yeah. I mean, Easily. I think the yeah. I think Grana said the other day they've been going um, like thirty. 30 years or it's 29 years now turning 30 which is a it's very amazing. long time to, yeah. to run any business let alone a wrestling yeah. business and mm -hmm. like you just said you know they've been through the dark times of wrestling and they've been through the good times of wrestling i sure. believe right now uh, british wrestling is still on its peak and i think it's going to get even bigger because we i i believe we produce some of the best wrestling in the world mm -hmm. i was going to ask you about that next actually like you being as young as you are obviously working in the current system that we're in in the uk how do you find that as a performer like when you go out working for other promotions because i've never known of a time where i'm coming up to a weekend and i've almost got to choose between three events that yeah. i could go to which is just like i mean even three or four years ago that was not the case no. um, and then people people really pounced negativity when nxt uk started to hit and they thought it was going to be the end of the uk scene and it was going to have this massive downpour but I, if anything from my point of view anyway i've only seen it get better and stronger because other guys have all come in guys and girls have all come in and kind of filled those spots um and and the way it's, I would say the biggest change for me over the years is just not not so much the amount of promotions, but how professionally run they are a little bit more. Um, yeah, I I, I totally of, see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I used to I used to joke about this a lot on my podcast, but I mean, I remember going to a show once and it was like uh, they didn't even have a ring. It was like a gym mat and two guys that even I thought like I could take that came walking out and I was like, hey, yeah. That's just <laughs> this is this is as good as that is. But now yeah, that yeah, everything yeah. is so professionally run. How how is it for you being on the circuit? And like that side of it. Do you think that like you just mentioned, like you 
you see it only not even reaching its peak. Um, do you think, like, obviously, like, with NXT UK, I know there was some stuff around World of Sport as well. Have they had, like, a significant impact on the scene, or do you think that everything's just been going one way in general? I don't know. I, I don't think, um, you know, the, the, a lot of them did have a massive impact because, like, the, you know, you just reached the NXT UK, for example, they took a lot mm. of the best UK workers away, um, mm. you know, and they, they, they've got them on a contract and they can only work for NXT UK. Um, sure. And I think, it's, I think that's actually great because there's a lot of hidden talent that people didn't know about, which they now know about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. that hidden talent is now the current of the UK scene. Mm -hmm. And um, the ones that were the top of the UK scene are now under contract, earning a good living. So it's sort of a, a win-win all round. But I still believe, you know, that British wrestling is on its rise um, mm -hmm. because... That problem you have on a Saturday picking between three shows, I think you're going to have mm -hmm. that problem on a Thursday picking between yeah. four shows. Just really? because, yeah, I think it's going to reach a different level. You know, you look at some of the people out there representing us at the moment. Mm -hmm. You've got, um, for example, Will Ospreay, um, yeah. who, who current, you know, Red Pro British mm -hmm. um, heavyweight champ. I, I think he's going to be the IWGP heavyweight champ in the very yeah. near future. And you've yeah. got to look for something yeah. like that. Um, mm -hmm. is gonna it's gonna impact British wrestling because he's gonna be coming back here with that belt and it's gonna make it's gonna elevate British wrestling yet again. You know, yeah. you look at you, for example, you look at Drew McIntyre just won the WWE um, the championship. If wrestling was still here at the moment, you think the buzz is gonna be around, especially in Scotland. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be on the mm -hmm. rise. Um, yeah, and you know everything that the people that the at the top of the scene do is gonna mm -hmm. impact what. The rest of the scene doing the buzz around British wrestling, and mm -hmm. um, and that's just a massive impact. You know, you, you obviously you got Kip Sabian who started with WWE and AEW, who is in the TNT, yeah. you know, championship tournament. If he wins that, I just think the buzz is going to create around the, the UK yet again. So I, I do believe yeah. it's still on its rise for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree, and I, yeah, like I said, I just never seen it so busy, um, like just never, never been like this before. Uh, so um, hopefully, like I know, like a lot of there, are, there is a lot of like sort of worry, I guess, with what's going on at the moment. But I, I kind of think, like my opinion is that when this is over, I think there's going to be quite a high demand for it, and I think you'll find that fans are kind of itching to go and watch a wrestling show again. So no matter where you are, what level you are, I think there'll be that that market will, um, will, yeah. only, will only get bigger, especially at the beginning. I think people will really want to get back and just get their fix of wrestling in general um, definitely just imagine so like, as well yeah. the, the the level of the shows as well you think the wrestlers are yeah. rested up and just like myself i'm itching to get back i can't wait to get in there and have a proper war with someone i can't wait to come out all bruised bloody i mean i, I you know when, when i come back i know i'm ready for it and um yeah you, I, I know for a fact that everyone else will be so just think of the level of the shows how good the show is going to be and it will just be mm -hmm. all round brilliant yeah yeah um who was are some of the guys that you've worked with, like, I always ask this question, um, who are some of the people you think that are on this current scene now that don't get as much recognition as they should? Is there anybody you've seen, like any little hidden gems that you've come across or watched like when you're in the back or anything like that, you've just come by and, and think that they, you know, they could be a star? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I said earlier that I about Alexander uh, Alexander Young, he's number, yeah, he'll be number, yeah. one, he'll be number yeah. one on that list. If I, could, if I could beg anyone to give him a chance... You know, especially look, put me yeah. on with him. I, I promise you, you know that he he is one of the elite athletes. He's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And if if I could if I could pick someone to to you know like really really help and get on a show, it would be him. But um, mm -hmm. you know, and there's there's too many talents that probably aren't seen where where they should be. But um, mm -hmm. and you know, and as well as probably you know people that they they could replace on other places. But it's just it's just how it works out. There'd be way too many talents to. Um, to, to talk about yeah absolutely uh, I've got to ask this did you, um, did you did you sit down and watch Wrestlemania from this year um, no I didn't sit down and watch I, I did see little highlights um, right yeah the, I how, watched, how um, are you finding like the, the empty arena stuff like, uh, just just is... just shows what um, you know what sort of athletes they are they can go out there and put on mm -hmm. still a three hour show um, sure. and you know and uh, they do it with, you know, they do it with the Raw, SmackDown, 
and NXT. So it's not just a one-off, you know. Um, they they mm-hmm. go out there, they go out there, and they're lucky enough to have a a um, 